In this video, I present the basic theory and application of the multivariate analysis of variance, otherwise known as MANOVA. MANOVA is another variation of basic analysis of variance, and it's designed to again test significance of group differences, and it could be one or more independent variables with multiple groups in which you want to test their effects. But the differentiation between a MANOVA and an ANOVA is the fact that you are now testing the effect of the independent variables on more than one outcome. So an example might be the effect of ultrasound treatment on elbow range of motion and pain with movement, or the effect of speech therapy on the correctness of pronunciation, the speaking rate, and a measure of self-efficacy. So both of those examples demonstrate the ability to study the effect of a treatment on multiple outcomes simultaneously. Now we can also include a one or more covariates similar to what we do in ANCOVA, but still look at the effect of the covariate on multiple outcomes. And this would be known as MANCOVA, or the multivariate analysis of covariates. Now the purposes. Why do we want to use MANCOVA? Well, very often we want to test the effect of a treatment on multiple outcomes, not just one outcome. Many treatments might have multiple types of effects, or effects on multiple characteristics of a subject or a patient. And we might want to see what effect the treatment might have on all of these outcomes or characteristics simultaneously. So it allows us to create a broader or more holistic examination of treatment effects and to see if a treatment might have a greater effect on one outcome versus another. So again, this tests the independent variable effects on a combination of the dependent variables as well as on each outcome separately. One assumption of this is that the outcomes need to be somewhat related to each other. In other words, they cannot measure things that are distinctly opposite or distinctly different from one another. They need to have some relationship or some similarity to one another. So some of the advantages and disadvantages. Certainly the advantage of the MANOVA is our ability to look at changes caused by independent variables over multiple outcomes. And again, this is very often what we do clinically. We don't just measure the effectiveness of a treatment on one outcome, we measure it on multiple outcomes, which could be uh, physical function, it could be mental, mental function, it could be quality of life, it could be all of those things simultaneously. So we want to make sure we're able to be able to, to very often to detect those changes. And so if we wanted to look at the effect of a treatment on, let's say, four or five different outcomes, if we had, if we use simple ANOVA, we'd have to do four or five separate simple ANOVAs. And what a simple ANOVA also cannot tell us is how much of an effect the variables might have on all of these outcomes simultaneously as well as individually. We can't really make that comparison when we're doing separate ANOVAs. Because of that, this limits the probability of making a type 1 error. If we did four or five separate ANOVAs, we'd have an inflation of the error rate each time we did that ANOVA, whereas if we do a MANOVA, that will limit the type 1 error rate that we have because the MANOVA test is an omnibus test and it can tell us initially if there are significant differences somewhere and then we can look for more specific differences without inflating the error rate. And this also helps us account for that interrelationship among the dependent variables. So there might be greater or lesser effect on one outcome of the treatment, or there might be some kind of a combination effect of an outcome on treatments. Now the disadvantages, as you may have already perceived, is that this is a much more complicated analysis. There are multiple steps involved in trying to determine the effect on multiple outcomes, and this becomes even more complicated if we have multiple independent variables and also potential for multiple covariates. So that is one disadvantage. And because of the greater number of variables that we're working with, the analysis might be less powerful. In other words, there could be a slightly greater chance of a type 2 error um, in which we're accepting a null hypothesis or assuming there is no difference or no effect of a treatment when in reality there may be because of the complexity of the analysis. So some assumptions and limitations involved with doing MANOVA, and as I mentioned, one of them is that the dependent variables are related to one another. They have to have some shared variance. We don't want too much because then that means they're basically measuring the same thing, but we want them to have some level of interrelationship and shared variance, and that relationship should be linear. 
We're assuming the sample is going to be random or at least uh, sampled in a way that assures group equivalence. Um, the outcome uh, variables must be normally distributed and there should be a uh, variant should be equal among all the groups similar to what we had looked at in ANOVA in t-testing. So the logic of MANOVA, how this actually works, is that, as I mentioned before, MANOVA is an omnibus test. So what it does, it first tests the overall hypothesis that the independent variable affects the DVs together. In other words, there is some level of response in all outcomes. And is that level of response in all the outcomes together, is that statistically significant? And the test statistics we use versus an F-score is what's known as Wilkes Lambda. And we also sometimes use Pelize Trace, which can be used when assumptions like equal variance may be violated. So the formula creates kind of a, a new aggregate dependent variable that maximizes the differences among the groups. So differences among the groups will be maximized when we look at all the dependent variables simultaneously. And if there are differences, then those will show up in that initial omnibus test. After that linear combination of the group of dependent variables is created, then there's the second step is there is a separate ANOVA that then compares the groups on that new composite dependent variable. If there is significance there, then there is in essence a post hoc that's performed on each individual dependent variable. So after we've looked at whether or not there's significance for all the variables together, and if there is, then we can look at whether or not one variable might be creating more of that significance than another. In other words, does the treatment affect outcome A more than it affects outcome B, and then maybe even more than it affects outcome C. So there could be then an overall statistical significance, but there could be maybe one or two outcomes that's driving that statistical significance versus, versus others. So again, there are several steps involved uh, as we look at the effect of the treatment on various levels, all the dependent variables together and then individually and then perhaps even by group with each individual outcome. So hopefully this gives you a sense of how MANOVA and MANCOVA works. Again, to summarize, it's designed to look at the effect of treatments or multiple treatments, multiple or single independent variables on multiple outcomes. So to contrast that with an ANOVA, a, a regular one-way ANOVA looks at the effect of a group of treatments on a single numeric outcome, whereas MANOVA can look at the effect of treatment groups on multiple numeric outcomes. So if you have any questions, please make sure you post those in the forum, and we'll see you soon.